let me introduce our book, Ultrasound of the Musculoskeletal System. This book has been created for all those passionate about m ultrasound, more than 500 pages about anatomy and pathology. Inside the book, you will find amazing images of anatomy, sonanatomy, and pathology. This will improve and facilitate your knowledge in ultrasound. If you want more information, take a look at mskroom.com. So, we are going now to talk, uh, uh, to talk about the Doppler. And uh, we have this patient, which has uh, Decker-Benn tenosynovitis, okay? uh, with uh, the affection of the first compartment, as you know, sorry, here. And in this case, this, uh, this first compartment is uh, separated by this uh, wall here, which uh, isolates the extensor digital uh, extensor polycis brevis and the uh, ductor polycis longus. Okay, and in this case, the affection is only of the extensor polycis brevis here. You can see the thickness of the uh, compartment, and as we go distal, you can see how this tendon uh, becomes thicker. And with this uh, hetero echo sorry hetero echogenicity and these areas of anechoic um, images will uh, that is are telling us there is some uh, tears inside the tendon. Okay, but now I want to, to know uh, how the Doppler is, uh, how the synovitis is, how active is the synovitis. So we must use the Doppler. We have two kinds of Doppler in musculoskeletal practice, the color Doppler and the power Doppler. Color Doppler measures the speed of the flow and uh, power Doppler the intensity of this flow. Usually power Doppler is uh, more sensible, so we use power Doppler instead of color Doppler, but we can use both. Okay? So uh, we are going to activate power Doppler and the first thing is that we have this box, this Doppler box this green Doppler box and uh, we can move the Doppler box with the, our trackball and we use this trackball to uh, locate the Doppler box in the area we want to examine. Okay? Second thing, we can manipulate the size of this Doppler box. We can uh, get the uh, Doppler box bigger but as uh, when we uh, turn the, the Doppler box bigger, we will see how the um, frames per second, the uh, frame rate uh, will decrease. So if you see this huge Doppler box with uh, 13 uh, frames per second, and as the Doppler box here, sorry, here, as the Doppler box becomes smaller, you see how the frames are increasing 16, 19, and 23 frames per, se per second. So um, the ideal Doppler box must be just the size you want to uh, analyze and to check and uh, no more, okay? Because we can see only the flow inside the box. Uh, if, you, if you notice when the box is over this uh, artery, you see the, the, the flow inside, but as we move the box, we don't see the flow inside the artery. So we will locate the box in the area we want to examine, okay? Adjust the size to have a good view, as small as possible. And once we have the size, we, there are other, other parameters we need to check. First one is the PRF. In this, this is um, the uh, uh, the pull the pulse of the frequency the probe emits. Okay, and um, if we decrease this uh, PRF, we are going to notice how the uh, Doppler signal becomes uh, heavier and even causes artifacts. Okay, because this, uh, this now this PRF is too low. In musculoskeletal, in musculoskeletal practice, we usually use in uh, small vessels a PRF of uh, 5 or 6. For example, 6 or 5 may be a good value. Okay? 
Second, be careful not to um, push too much with the probe. If we notice here we are pushing, you can see here some uh, vessels, excuse me, here, okay? And notice as we release the pressure, we have a better view, a better sensibility of the Doppler. So don't push the probe too much because you are going to collapse the vessels, okay? And you are going to miss vessels. Okay, so PRF, uh, another, um, take a look at this uh, vein here. We have a PRF of a five, and now we are going to decrease the PRF. And as the, ve the veins have a very slow flow, we need to decrease the PRF to have a view of the flow inside the veins, okay? Let's go now again to six, okay? Second parameter, the gain. Uh, Doppler has also a gain, like B mode, and its um, meaning is the same. Uh, it uh, adjusts the sensibility of the Doppler, the brightness of the Doppler, okay? So if we, you have here, sorry, You have here the gain, and look what happens when we increase the gain. Again, artifacts uh, are shown, um, more artifacts as more high, uh, as, as we increase the gain. So uh, you, we must use the gain uh, where there are no artifacts, the higher gain where there are no artifacts, okay? So maybe here, okay? Here there are no artifacts and a good view of the vessels here. So PRF and gain are the two parameters and the main parameters you want to uh, um, adjust when you use Doppler, okay? There's a third one, the frequency, okay? So a uh, Doppler also has a frequency and it works like uh, the B mode. If you want to check the vessels very, very superficial, then maybe you need to increase the frequency. And if you want to check the vessels uh, on depth, then not, sometimes you will need to decrease the frequency. Frequency in Doppler is not a, a very common parameter to adjust, but sometimes it may, may help you. For example, if you see this vessels he, sorry these vessels here uh, kind of superficial okay here and we are now with a uh, 12 megahertz of frequency now we are going to you can see the frequency here okay now we are going to change the frequency to 8 and you see how these vessels become more uh, uh, disappear okay in 12 and again in eight. So these small changes sometimes are um, needed to have a good view of the Doppler. For example, here, 12 megahertz is perfect because we are very superficial, okay? And the uh, last, uh, last uh, thing I want to show you is the, uh, the steering of the Doppler box. So if we are in, in color Doppler, and we want to check, for example, we are going to check the radial artery, okay, here. Okay, yes, uh, two, um, we are going to increase a little bit PRF because this is a very, uh, is, is, uh, a quicker flow. We are going to decrease gain here. Okay, this is a quite good view of the Doppler inside the radial artery, okay? Now we are going to turn the probe over its long axis here, okay. Perfect. Okay, see what, what happens when we are perpendicular, uh, when the, the vessel is, is perfectly perpendicular to the probe. Okay, let's 
Capture and Reprove. Here, okay. Now we are, sorry, better here, okay. Now we are perfectly, perfectly perpendicular to the probe. And you can notice how the Doppler is not, uh, we, we don't have a good Doppler now. Because of the properties of the Doppler, when the vessels are perfectly perpendicular to the probe, um, the probe doesn't um, have a good uh, image of the uh, red blood uh, cells uh, coming, uh, approaching or uh, going away from the probe. So we can use the steering of the, of the box to have a better view of the Doppler. So you can use this image here and you can see how the Doppler becomes more uh, sensible or even here. Okay, and check the difference between the box without steering and with steering, okay? So, if you want to have a good view of uh, the flow inside the vessel, which is maybe more, okay, which is perfectly uh, perpendicular to the probe, you can steer the Doppler box and you will have a better view of the, of the flow inside, okay? So those were the, the parameters I wanted you, uh, me to, to tell you about how to, um, how to configure the Doctor in Mesoskeletal Ultrasound. Thank you very much.